Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Taylor Show, episode 30. Episode 30. Oh, yeah. Uh, Fourth of July, if you're listening, I'm doing this before Fourth of July, but you would be listening to this after Fourth of July. And, you know, hope you had a good whatever you did, depending on where you are. It probably, it probably varied. Most of you, you know, you probably went to a public place and you were afar and you set down a blanket and then there was a pretty mediocre, let's be honest, fireworks show that happened. And But you left and you were like, that was pretty, that was pretty, wow, that was pretty good. How about the finale, huh? Wow, that was a good finale. That was real. you say like, wow, while the finale's happening. Wow. And then right as it ends, you go, that had to be the finale. <laughs> like, we're so, we look forward to it so much, and then it's, it's, it just it is never what it's supposed to be. Fireworks are not fully tapped into their potential unless you're using them up close. Fireworks are not fun unless you're shooting them at your friends and someone almost gets their hand taken off. You know what I mean? Like, that's... A Roman candle is is the is better to me than one of those rockets that shoots two hundred feet in the air and, and explodes and whizzes and do, does all that. It's like it's less fun, you know. It's the closest to an explosive that we get to play with, and uh, it's it's just far more enjoyable. I mean, growing up, we didn't really. We didn't set off a ton of like fireworks. It was more it, we stuck mainly to firecrackers, I would say, cracker. Firecrackers and um mainly for mischievous purposes. I mentioned on a few episodes, I don't know how many episodes back about the guy in our neighborhood Ron who who we would just uh who we would torment for for, you know, no other reason than he he once inconvenienced us and called me a name, and then we ruined his life for a summer. We used a lot of firecrackers on him. We had him rigged. You know, as kids, you would always talk about. Uh, it, it was always cool when you got a, when you got the Chinese fuse. You got like a an adapt. It was like the first adapter, or anything that needed an adapter was our fireworks, and you got like a longer fuse, so you could tie it and then walk away, and it would ex- it would explode. And it's like to this day, I really don't know what a firecracker is. Like, I guess it's, I guess it's gum, pa- gunpowder. Do people still use gunpowder? Like, is that a thing? Is that actually in a bullet? Does anyone know? Is gunpowder? Here we go. Is gunpowder powder still used today? Though it's largely been supplanted by smokeless powder as a propellant for ammunition and guns, black powder is still widely used for ignition charges, primers, fuses, blank charges, and ammunition. Okay, but what about for fireworks? It's no longer used for industrial gunpowder. Fireworks are made with black powder. What the fuck is black powder? No one knows. Okay, so no one knows. Gunpowder, that's like what you, you know, in, in the olden days with the muskets and whatnot, right? That's what you poured down the thing and then you jack. I never understood that in movies when you, I don't know what, I don't know what's happening there. Maybe somebody who knows about guns can explain, but like when they pour the gunpowder down there and then they like jam it in there, it just seems like it. that's not how it's supposed to work. You know what I mean? It seems like you should just put a thing in the gun and then the gun goes off. Like this whole, oh, this goes in the capsule. And then I just never understood what that long stick was that they like shoved it down. Or maybe that was cannons. Maybe that wasn't, I mean, a, 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 what's the fucking word? The muskets. That's basically a cannon, right? It's a handheld cannon. But they would do that with cannons. Where they'd shove the thing like we're, we're, or was that not, or was that only muskets? Because cannons shoot cannonballs. But like, what do muskets shoot? If, maybe muskets just shoot little can. I'm I am so lost. Muskets 
What do muskets shoot? Muskets shoot firing round lead balls or buck and ball ammunition. Okay, so they they not bullets, just big balls of lead. Anyway, we didn't do any of that shit. We just had fire firecrackers. You know, and that's where you really have the most fun. If you're not using your fireworks to do something that is semi-illegal or that you probably shouldn't, it's really not that great of a time. You know what I mean? And in New York, it's it's like impossible. If you want to see the fireworks, there's like three places to go, and everybody go. They sit there like all day. It's like it's like Black Friday, waiting to just see these stupid fireworks, and. I, maybe it's it's impressive because it's like, it's a city. Where did they set it off? Or it's fucking dangerous. It's like the one explosion that we'll, we'll allow in New York. Everything else is pretty uh, pretty triggering, let's say, um, as far as explosions go. But speaking of explosions, how about that pipeline, huh? There's a pipeline that uh, exploded in the Gulf of Mexico, and the ocean, it just looked like it was on fire because a pipeline burst and huh where's where's my girl Greta bring in G Thunberg she was talking about it on Twitter and of course I don't know why I was just about to do that voice for I don't know why I was just about to do Greta's voices of course they're just building another pipe that'd be so funny if she talked like that instead of Swedish British whatever the fuck she is I feel like no one would listen to her. That's a great point. Nobody would probably listen to Greta if she if she didn't sound that the didn't, she didn't sound the way that she sounds. Cuz you know, we all think we have this thing with British people and I know she's not British, she's from like Sweden or whatever, but or or Stockholm or one, one of those fucking places. But we do kind of hear that voice and we're like, "Oh yeah, you sound you sound smart." But if Greta was, you know, when she made that first speech, she was 16. If she was like, um, I just think it's weird how, like, we have all this coal. And, like, we're just, like, still using coal. <laughs> like, like if, if that's how she sound sounded, they, they wouldn't have let her go on strike. They would have been like, we need you to get back in the classroom. Uh, you will fail my class if you don't get back in here. How, why did they let her do that? I never understood that part of her story. Like she just stood outside of school and and went on strike of school, which a real original thought there when it comes to kid young kids and you know, dude, give me a fucking reason to protest. I'll yeah, I'll skip school as well. Like that's the thing. She got she got like the amount of kids she got to strike and protest about climate change. It's like, yeah. Because the alternative was sitting in math class. No shit. But I don't understand how, like, that's not a good example, right? That's not a good lesson to be like, yeah, you could leave the class as long as the thing is, the thing that you're protesting is noble enough. <laughs> that would, I mean, that would, honestly, it would have been more noble if she if she failed school and still did it anyway, then I would believe, you know what I mean? If you're, if your teachers still pass you, if her teachers are like, you will a hundred percent fail my class. You're not in class. You don't, you haven't taken any tests. Yeah. I'm, mean, you're going to fail. So, I mean, by all means stand outside with the sign, but I mean, you can fail middle school or whatever she was in. It doesn't really matter. Do you even fail? I guess you just get held back, but she's like, I have a career ahead of me, okay? This is, you think, you think you're going to hold me down with your eighth grade math class by failing me? I'm going to be the chick that travels by sailboat, okay? Not going to hold me down. Dude, it was pretty crazy, though. The fact that, that the pipe, I don't understand, this is another thing, I don't get how I know that there's a lot of oil and that the thing bursts, but like, how does the wa- How does the water not like win? Do you know what I mean? How does it not? How does it not just win? The fire's in. It's in the water, and then there's a bunch of boats around there pouring water on it, trying to put it out, even though it's in water. 
Like, could somebody explain that to me? Is it because they're, it's exposed to the air? But it literally just looks like there's fire coming up from the water. Like, does water have to be... Is the water not watery enough? I know that sounds stupid, but like, you know, there's solids, liquids, gases, and then the so the fire turns the liquid into a gas. Is the is the fire turning the liquid into a gas faster than the water can turn the fire? Is the what is fire? Fire's not a liquid. It's not a salt. Is fire a gas? So does the liquid of the water have to turn the fire? I I got nothing. I got nothing. I don't know how the fuck it works. Everything I was taught in school was a lie, okay? I was taught that if there's a fire, you take water and you put out the fire, all right? And then I was also told that Iraq was responsible for 9-11. And on both those things turned out not to be true, okay? Allegedly. Um... Yeah, dude, I'm fucking, I'm, I'm just been, I've been pooped, man. I've tried, I've been trying to go back to the gym recently and, and, you know, the first week back at the, or just starting to work out again is always like the hardest, I guess. And, and I'm just, I'm not at the point where working out feels good. People are, you know, you know, the people who just work out all the time are just like, oh my God, like when I do it, I just feel so great. Like. I do it, and then I feel great. And and granted, that person is also me at a different point in my life. Like, it's so crazy how quickly I will shift my views based on whether or not I'm actively doing that thing. Do you know what I mean? Like, if, I'm, if I've been on a streak, if I've been on a hot streak, which for me is like two weeks at the gym, I, I turn into David Goggins. I'm like, people are weak, and they have no discipline, and they just need to go to the gym and run up a hill or, or pick something heavy up and put it down. It's very simple, okay? Stop eating simple carbs. <laughs> like, I will preach to you if I've been to the gym for more than two weeks. However, if I've not been to the gym for more than two weeks, I'm like, you don't understand the conditions that I have, okay? You don't know what's wrong with my thyroid, all right? I have a condition that doesn't allow me to uh, lace my shoes properly to then walk to the gym no, I'm not that bad. I will go, but it, it's it like I get why people don't have the motivation to just do the thing themselves. I get why people get a trainer, just someone to be like, here, do this thing, and then you do it because you don't have the whatever it is to tell yourself. And I get I get that feeling. You eat some shitty food. You you don't sleep that well. When you go to the gym, you're like, how about I just sit down on this bench? How about I just scroll Twitter a little bit, you know? I mean, I try not to. Sometimes I feel like I need to be at the gym longer than I actually need to. Like, if you just crank out a good 20, 25 minutes, you're, you know, you're fine. You don't need to be there for that long. But I feel like if I do that, I'm like, oh, it's only been fucking 20 minutes, but I'm dying. I'm like, is that good enough? I don't know. But it's been good. It's been good to be back because I don't know. I debated. It's gym memberships in New York. They're a lot of money, but like I have no other time. Like I leave the house at fucking early in the morning. I don't get back till late. There's no other place to work out. I'm not gonna be the fucking lunatic doing pull ups on the scaffolding and, and doing squats in the street before I, you know, go do comedy. I'm not doing it. So I, I go to the fucking gym. And also, I need to use the shower there. I need a shower, and I need a shower that gives towels. If you don't, if you're a gym and you offer showers, but you don't have towel service, fuck off. Because I'm not carrying around. I'm not going to be the guy with the backpack and then the gym bag on top of the backpack, where I get where I where I put my shoes and then mix it with my towel and my and then the dirty clothes. And if you don't provide those little the little wet bags where you put your dirty clothes in there and you squeeze out all the air and then you spin it tight and you throw that in your bag. So essential. So essential. Because otherwise, I got to bring my shit and it all mixes. I, I brought my towel one time to Planet Fitness. And when it's your towel, you are so aware of everything that your towel is touching. I, I don't want to put this down on the bench, let alone whatever. 
you know, let alone me. I don't even want to use it on me while I'm in this public gym. But if it's if it's your towels, if they're not my towels, dude, I am the le- Greta Thunberg would hate me at the gym because I am the least con- conservative person in terms of towels and just supplies, natural resources. I mean, I I go through it all because I'm fucking paying for it. You know what I mean? Like, I will go into the shower. I'll Before I head in there, there's like a rack of towels. I'll take four of them, okay? Take four towels, and then I use one if I feel like doing the sauna, and they have a sauna. Yes, they have a sauna. Screw you. I deserve it. I go into the sauna, use one towel there. Boom. That towel goes in the in the wash or in the in the hamper. Then I use another towel, take that to the shower, take the shower, I'll wrap up in the shower, I'll do maybe I'll do the legs, then I'll walk to back to the locker, take another towel out, I put that on the floor. That goes right on the floor. Boom. Cause I want I wanna put my feet, I want to put my feet on the nice cushy towel that feels good and I and I like it. And then, and then after that, so where are we at there? That's okay. So that's two towels. Third towel goes on the floor. Then I take the fourth towel and that's my upper body. So I got one around my waist, one on the ground, one in the hamper. And then I have another one up top that I use to dry out. It just feels good to be covered in, in towels and then be able to shed it all. I shed it all and it all goes in the hamper and I don't have to deal with it. I don't have to do, and I could get a fifth if I want. I have. I have before. I've had I've I've done it where like I've I did all the steps except when I come back I have I have an extra one. So now I got four in the cabinet. I take the one I wore from the shower to the locker, take that off and replace it. So that by the time I actually sit down to do the active drying time, I have all dry towels. And that's the kind of shit that I pull because I'm fucking paying for it. I'm paying a lot of money to use this gym. And if I'm it's like if I'm only there if I'm working out for not that long, I'm going to be using some other shit. I'll stay there, I'll use your Wi-Fi. When I'm in the shower, I I use so much body wash. It's criminal. I mean, I really I will pump that thing dry using body wash. Get this, I also use shampoo and conditioner because you know the shampoo I'm like I still need to wash my head right so I use a lot of shampoo and then I use so much conditioner on my head so much I mean I basically just cake I I like I put a fondant icing layer of sh- of, uh, of conditioner on my head and I let that sit there while I do the conditioner and so my head so then my head is squeaky the other day I not only I use the body wash on my body, but because I'm so goddamn, uh, you know, hairy and Italian, I conditioned, use the conditioner on my body. I don't know if you're supposed to do that. I don't know if it does anything, but I fucking did it because I was like, I want to be silky smooth. I want to be silky soft. And then sometimes if I'm feeling, if I got some real time on my hands, I'll take one of the six or seven towels that I have, I'll wrap that around my waist, and then I'll go to the giant mirror, and they have body lotion, and then I'll I'll lube up with that as well. So I'm using all your stuff. They got mouthwash in there with these little Dixie cups. Get some pumps in there. If you have a thing to be used at the gym, I will use it. I have gone and stood in front of the mirror with a hair dryer that they provide, and I've put it on the highest setting, and I have just... I, I've I've dried myself with a hair dryer before because it, it feels better. It's less abrasive, and, it, and sometimes after a cold shower, because I take cold showers when I'm in David Goggins mode, it feels nice after a cold shower to dry myself with a hair dryer. And I will stand there until I am, I'm dry. And I'll do, I'll do the balls. I'll do the balls with the hair dryer. And people look, and I say, you know what? I got an all-access membership. I got an all-access membership, and I pay top dollar. I pay top dollar because I can now, I, with my card, I can go to any gym in the city. I can go to all the locations. I'm not just stuck here. So I do this at all the locations so they all get a taste 
of what I'm doing when I go to your gym. Now, I'm not like an animal. If I'm in the gym and I'm working out, I put back my weights. I'm not that guy. You know what I mean? If I take something out, I put it back. I'll reset the rack. I don't always wipe it down. I'm not going to, I don't, I don't wipe down every dumbbell, dumbbell after I, after I touch it. Not going to be that guy, but I do put it back. But then I, but then I go a little reckless when I go into the, uh, into the showers. Cause that's what I'm about. There's so many, you know, you don't get a lot of times to just really be luxurious. And that's, you know what I mean? It feels luxurious to do that, even though I'm paying for it. And it's amazing how how quickly we get used to any convenience that's introduced to us or that we're paying for. Like how then we expect it. Like when I like I I expect the sauna to be working when I go to the gym, and when it's not, I, in my mentally in my head, I'd never say the word of this out loud. I flip out. I mean, I really lose it. But I'm not owed that, you know, like the like the Panera coffee subscription. Nine dollars a month, unlimited, unlimited hot and cold coffee, twice a day, every day. That's sixty coffees a month, nine dollars a month. That's about six cents a coffee. Okay, that's what I'm contributing. However, if I order it on the app and I walk over to Panera and it's not waiting on the little cart pickup thing when I walk in, I you know heads are gonna roll. They just are, because I walk in there like I'm the I'm the goddamn president of this of this corporation, and I want the coffee with my name on it. And I will not settle for less. I'll never go back. But I don't yeah, I mean it's like I am a different we're all different people under different circumstances, depending on you know what's happening. If you give me if you this is why not everybody should be in power. I shouldn't be in power. I probably wouldn't be able to handle it. And I would probably, I, I don't know. It's it's weird. Like the whole like abuse of power. That's a weird way. Because I feel like the connotation is that you would be like abusive to people. I, I wouldn't. I would just, I would be a man of excess. That's what I would, if I had, if I had power. Like if I was, you know, if I was Jeff Bezos, let's say. I'd like to believe I would try to treat my employees a little bit better. However, if I was that rich, I would only like if I was like hungry for pizza, let's say, I would order 20 pizzas and then I would only take the first slice and I would take one bite of the first slice and I'd get rid of the pizza. Because I think that the first bite of the first slice of the pizza is the best pe- it's the best bite. It's the best bite of the pizza. Is that first is that first piece when you open up the pie? So that's all I would eat. Those are all the pizza things that I would eat. So I'd have a stack of them, just get it out, boom, get it out, bite, get it out. That's how I would eat pizza. But I would pay a decent wage to my workers. I like to think. He put out something, or I, don't, I think this is something he said like three years ago or something that like he doesn't like the term work-life balance and he thinks that it should be a circle or some horse shit like that. Which is, you can't really tell. You, you can't really take anything that guy see, says seriously about he's trying to relate to the worker who, who like works in his factory. Like I don't want them to think that they're separate things. Like it's a you know a, a trade off of work and life. It should be just a circle. You should you know you go you see your family very quickly and then you come back to work and then you use the bathroom for thirty seconds or else you get fined and then you come back to work. As long as the circle keeps going and you keep coming back to work, then then it all works. Then it all then you'll be like me. You'll be the the richest man in the world publicly. Not like those Saudi people who who hide their money. We don't even know how much money they have. They're actually losing money right now because of this fucking pipeline. That doesn't make any sense. That's not where their oil goes. Do we get our oil from there? Are we still doing that? I don't know. Someone get Greta on the line. I'm not a smart person. I don't know. She should go back to school. I should probably go back to school. We should all go back to school. I really was not a smart kid. I I, I cheated a lot. 
I don't know if I've talked about this. I cheated a lot in school. Um, I was kind of a master at it. That kind of became the way, like, I'd go into a class. It was very much like when I used to steal. I'm like, how can, what is the con? How can I do this? The biggest con was in Spanish. Now, I did take Spanish one for, like, three years, so I don't know how good it worked, but it was the only way I was going to get through the class. You know, I was not going to learn all the fucking conjugations and the and the translations and the verbs and this is the, the past and the present tense and, oh, but this is you. This is you informal. It, go fuck yourself. I know, I know we have that in English and I know our, you know, thing is, is way more complicated. Our language supposedly is way more complicated than other languages, which it's very hard to believe that when you just look at... I can't imagine that... Other people look at the English language like they don't speak it. They look at like text and they think that is more complicated than like Japanese text. I don't, you know what I mean? It's just like, what, what's going on? They'll have like, it's not even like they're not even, are they letters? Are they symbols? Every symbol looks like a, looks like they just drew a house or like a village or something. It's very, very complicated, I think. Maybe that's the one example that's not a good one because Japanese actually is uh, more complicated than English. Point is, we should go back to school. I'd like to see if I could go back and not cheat and see if I passed. Because I would I would cheat a lot. In Spanish, my go-to move was... So, you know, you had to learn all the, the, the translations and the definitions and, you know, what is the, uh, fucking usted or, you know, whatever it is. Vocab was a big one. I'd always, I'd never was good at the vocab. So what I would do is I would type out on like a Word document all of the definitions of the vocab words. You know, all the things relating to the classroom or whatever. And then I'd like hit a couple spaces and then I'd put, you know, the breakdowns of the tenses and all that stuff. I'd have a nice little Word document uh, formulated, right? And then I would shrink it to like size eight font like eight and then I would print them out I print it out and it was like a little little card like this big and I would cut it out and leave a little extra room at the top on the corner and so I have this little card with a little extra on the corner and I would hole punch it I would hole punch it and then I would put that around my key ring and it just, it was big enough to where, this was back in like when I had like, you know, 19 membership cards on the key ring for no reason. You know, you have one for, you know, giant foods and, and the one for Planet Fitness and then one for whatever. So it just fit snug in between. It was a little bit bigger, but it fit in between those. It just looked like another membership thing. So I just had my keys on the table, you know, and they, oh, put away your, you know, notebooks and all that stuff. Nobody really paid attention to the keys. And so I would just slide it when the teacher, I would just slide it, slide it open, you know, fan open the little cards, see what I needed to see, and then fan it back in. It was was brilliant. And then some of the people, you know, around my desk started to catch wind of what was going on. And then you got two choices, you know, do you bring them in? Do you bring them in as a silent partner? Or or do do you snuff them and hope they don't snitch? Most of the time, so what I did, I, I just started to sell them. I was like, yeah, I can get you some. No, no problem. Just, I'm not crazy, you know, not crazy, but just like, you know, a buck, buck here, a buck there. And so I would go home and it doesn't, there's no overhead for me, you know, because I just take the Word document. I already, I don't even have to use more paper, right? I just shrink it and then I copy it multiple times in the same document and I print that out and I just cut them up. Make a couple bucks, buy some cookies at lunchtime, we're golden. Now, then what happens is there's a lot of pressure on you to deliver because if you make a shitty cheat sheet and people are relying on you, then, you know, then it comes down on you. People want, you know, then people want refunds. It's a whole thing. I had a small business that I was running, but it worked most of the time. Even if I didn't always have the, like, I didn't have everything that was going to be on the test. The way, like it was a good tool to use. 
because for a while the method was you had like a water bottle and you would peel back the label and you would write all the things on the label and then and then stick it back on the water bottle so that when you're looking at it as you turn it you can see but teachers started to catch on they were like all right these kids have the what they're just staring at their water bottle during the test like you know trying to see through the optical illusion of the the water and shit like they you know they caught on so if you even if you weren't cheating if you had a water bottle on your desk they were like paying an extra close eye to you but nobody really nobody spotted me nobody spotted me with the keys it was a good fucking move you know everybody cheated if you know what spark notes is you fucking cheated Sparknotes saved my life. And if I had better internet connection back then and phones were a little bit faster, I probably would have had better grades in school. Like, I can't imagine, like, if going to school now, how do you resist the urge to to use the internet? I mean, you, you can get it on your friggin' watch, for Christ's sake. There's probably an, there's probably a, a, an Apple Watch app for Sparknotes. Because I think there's a regular app, right? Does anyone know? I don't know. Maybe I should develop one. Maybe that'll be my my full circle cheating uh, business idea. I don't know. I think I'd be a good teacher. Not like because I'm good at teaching people. I would be a good teacher who catches kids cheating. You know, that was like the one thing about young teachers is they knew all the tricks because they were in school fucking six months ago. Or if you had like a teacher aide, sometimes we'd have teacher aides who would like, I don't know, they were, it's like a residency, I guess, for teachers. And they would just sit in and watch. And then like once a year, they got to teach the class and they felt good about themselves. And, uh, and then one day they would become the teacher, yada, yada, yada. It really, thinking back, it's like, it, it didn't seem like that hard of a job. You have a curriculum, you lay out all the things you're going to talk about, and if you have like a general idea of the subject, you're basically just fucking riffing for an hour. I mean, how long were classes? Hour? Hour and a half, depending on where you went and how it was laid out? Like, you could, you know, you could just riff on some topics, and if you run out of shit, you go to the next one. You go to the next uh, war that happened. And then you, you know, you get to just, you'll gloss over some things you think aren't important. And then if kids, you know, or they're talking, you just say, hey, this is going to be on the test. And they don't know. I think I could be a teacher. I just wouldn't want to because, uh, well, I, I wouldn't want to talk to kids. And also they get paid no money. So not that I'd be in it for the money, but I just, I don't know. I don't want to do anything with, with kids. You know, they're gross, and, and I, I'd probably end up getting fired by, like, dropping an F-bomb or just saying something inappropriate, you know, because I can't hold back. But I would t- maybe that would be my class. There should be there should be a class on how to cheat. I mean, be honest, that's, like, that's, that's going to serve you better in life. If you know how to, you don't want to be a cheater in life, but you should know how to cheat. You should know how to con a little bit, you know what I mean, you should know how to talk someone down on a price, you should know how to, I don't know, just see the easiest way possible, like how do I get this thing done with the least amount of work possible, isn't that something that that Bill Gates or some, some, I don't know, there's some famous quote from, maybe it's Bill Gates, who was like, I hire the, uh, the something, something, I hire the lazy kid because he's going to figure out the quickest way to get something done, which is not necessarily true. I get what he's going for. He's kind of going for what I'm saying, but that's not true. Because the lazy kid is then is not going to fucking show up for work. That's that's why he's lazy. But there are people, like I could, if I have any specialty in any job that I've held, it's it's figuring out how to do it the quickest fucking way. Which, again, it's important, you know? Anyway, that's the podcast this week. 
Uh, hope you had a good 4th of July and that you stared at the fireworks and it felt really nice and you were with somebody special and, and they and they kissed you. Or, or maybe not. Maybe you watched them with a group of people and there was someone in there who you who you want to be with, but, you know, she doesn't see you that way and uh, she, she doesn't even know that you like her because you haven't even told her how you felt and you're just going to go on feeling like that for the next uh, couple years and... and you lie to yourself and say that uh, that you feel fine, but you don't, and you're, and you're never going to say anything, and then eventually it'll all blow up in your face. But hey, at least those fireworks were good. Am I right, or am I right? All right, that's it. That's the podcast. See you next week. Bye.